What if I told you you could get a legitimate optics setup for your SHTF rifle for $720 that weighs under 11 ounces, comes with multiple different mounting options, and does not require batteries? Would you even believe me? Because you should, because it's something that is actually available. Over here I have the Primary Arms 3X Micro Prism with the Holosun SCS MOS in the offset position. And this is an awesome optic setup, and it's something I wanted to share with everybody because it covers all your bases, gives you just about all the capability you need, and it's relatively affordable compared to its direct competition. Now, this setup in particular weighs 10.8 ounces, and like I said, only costs $720. And you can get everything you see right here from Midway USA, who's the biggest supporter of the channel. So big thank you to them for that, except for there's one component we will have to talk about here in a second that you actually cannot get from them. Now, before I get started into the specifics of this optic setup, because I wanted to share this with everyone, it is a legitimate optic setup. I like it quite a bit. It shoots very nicely, and it brings everything to the table you need in the sense of positive identification, ranging, bullet drop compensation, and CQB when it comes to your red dot sight. So all those bases are covered, but it is a good enough optic setup. It is not a just as good optic setup. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that it's not just as good as a Trigicon ACOG with the RMR piggybacked on top. This is a superior optic setup has some features that I like a little bit better, it's probably more robust, and it is very clear in the sense of glass clarity. However, it also costs more than double. This usually runs between $1,500 and $1,700, and you pay a weight penalty. This particular model is a TA-11, which is a three and a half times magnification model, and it does weigh a little bit more than your standard TA-31. However, this setup is 19 ounces, and that setup is 10.8 ounces. So you can understand that you save a lot of money over here, you save a lot of weight, and you have very similar capabilities. A 3.5x magnified optic with a red dot sight on top for CQB or whatever else you might need it for, or a 3x magnified optic with a red dot offset. You can see that the capability is very similar. However, this is definitely a nicer optic, but I could get two of these optic setups for the price of this one. So these are things you have to consider, and that's why I wanted to bring it to your attention, because this is legitimately good, and I would definitely feel comfortable running this optic setup in any type of SHTF situation. So I wanted to mention all of that first. Now, the one component you can't get from Midway USA is the riser you see right here, which is a 1.93 inch riser. And the reason for that is that it's very proprietary to this exact product, so that is something that I had to source from Primary Arms directly. However, it comes with a million other mounting options, and I'll tell you about why I chose that one here in just a second. So first and foremost, let's talk about the micro prism itself. This is the 3X micro prism from Primary Arms, and it has the ACSS Raptor reticle. Now, I'm using the 762 by 39 reticle because I found that it lined up better with my bullet drop compensation for an 11.3 inch 556 that I'm currently running it on. However, for your standard 16 inch, 14.5, 13.7, or anything in that realm, you would probably want to stick with the 556308 ACSS reticle. Now, this is an eight ounce optic that has a 2.7 inch eye relief. So you do suffer some of the same eye relief issues as you would with like an ACOG or something like that. However, it is a prism optic, which means it has an etched reticle. And that means that even though it is illuminated, you don't need it to be illuminated for you to still have a reticle. So even if the batteries die, you still have a point of aim, which is very good for an SHTF style of optic, right? Now, it has lots of mounting options that aren't the 1.93 inch because that does require you to acquire it separately. However, it comes with a ton of different options. It comes with a bunch of cantilever mounts and all kinds of stuff like that as well, which I really like that you can just buy this one particular optic and get all the mounts you need in order to kind of customize it to your build or to your eye relief or whatever else you're trying to get. Now, the thing that sold me on the 1.93 inch mount is the fact that not only is it maybe a little bit better for like a heads up style of position when it comes to your cheek weld, but it's very solid and it's straight down to the base. Now, I did find on Focus Trips channel, who has a great channel, so I'd make sure to check him out if you'd like, and I'll go ahead and link that up here in the top of the video, so that way if you wanna see this failure point that this particular optic had, but on the cantilever mount, which helped kind of bring it further back for eye relief issues, or even let it kind of bridge over the top of a rear backup site, so that way you could still run that, well, the cantilever mount was a point of failure because a lot of tolerances were being stacked there. And he drop tested it on some steel, which is obviously worst case scenario, but still it did 
break the mount, which meant the optic was no longer functional. So that was something that I took from that video and decided to find a better solution. And the 1.93 inch mount is a straight block of aluminum. So it's not going to just bend or break in the same way that that cantilever mount did. At least in my opinion, it could possibly still break. I don't know for a fact. However, I think that's a good structural component in order to ensure something would be a little bit more durable for the long term. So that's why I went that route and I like the heads up position. Now, here's the thing. This thing has a chevron aiming point with a horseshoe around it. That's what the ACSS reticle is. If you're unfamiliar with Primary Arms' ACSS reticle, I find it to be very intuitive, very easy to use, and I like it quite a bit. So you have a chevron with a horseshoe around it. The horseshoe makes CQB situations a lot easier to acquire a target, whereas the chevron gives you that infinite aiming point, which is... Another discussion, but either way, it gives you a point of aim that can get you out a little bit further with some more proximity or uh, I guess with some more accuracy. And it has ranging holds, so that way you can find out if you have a human-sized target at different ranges, anywhere from, uh, I believe it takes you all the way out to 600 yards, and it has wind holds as well. So you get a lot of capability in that optic, in the sense of having holds, in the sense of BDC, in the sense of having a CQB reticle if you need it. So I do like that quite a bit about it. And it is illuminated as well. Now, there are many different reticle options when it comes to this particular optic. And what do I mean by that? Well, you can get it in 556, 308, or 545 by 39, or you can get it in 762 by 39, 300 blackout, which is what this one is here. Like I said before, because it lined up well with this 11.3 inch barrel. However, I wouldn't want to use that on a 16 inch 556. So those are things you should consider using some kind of ballistics program or something like that before you make a reticle decision. Now, what's really cool about the reticle setup is that in the manual, they actually give you tons of different zeros for different loadings based on whatever cartridge you're using so that it lines up the best with the bullet drop compensation. So that's something I would definitely research and check out as well, because if you go through that manual, I mean, they have stuff for like, I, I believe 6.8 SPC and all kinds of other loadings in there as well. So just something to keep in mind, I do appreciate that. And another good thing about this optic is the illumination settings. You get three night vision settings at the bottom and then you get 10 other settings from there. But in general, what I found is in order for it to be daylight bright, you have to be on max setting if you're outside on a sunny day. And of course, you could always get a little bit more illumination and feel good about it, I'm sure. But regardless, it's still bright enough to see. And like I said, it's a prism optic, so you don't actually need the illumination at all, especially if it's daytime. So really, it's more useful in lower light conditions because you have that contrast. And during the day, you could just use the reticle turned off and have that black ACSS reticle that's still very easy to see. So I do like that quite a bit about it. And the illumination settings are easy to use because they use a rotary knob that's on the side of the optic. Very simple. There is no off position in between each setting, which I know a lot of other optics do now, but I don't find that to be that big of a deal because generally I either have it on off or like the brightest setting. Now the night vision settings are there. Um, you can see this optic under night vision, but because it's a 3X magnified optic, I just haven't found it to be mm, very intuitive with night vision or even reasonable to use with night vision because it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So that's just my experience so far but oh well, not the worst thing in the world that it's not the most capable night vision optic, right? So it does have a motion activation in it. It's called Auto Live, which saves the battery. Now, one thing I noticed about this optic in particular is that Primary Arms doesn't advertise the battery life. They just say that they don't want to advertise it in some dishonest way because, you know, you could say it has 50,000 hours, but that all depends on what setting you have it on, how often you're using it, what you're doing with the optic in general. Uh, even temperature and environment can affect that. So all they said is that with the auto life feature and leaving it on whatever setting you think is best for you, it will last a very long time. And I do agree with that because I've had it for more than four months now and I've left it on setting number nine and I haven't had the battery die yet. And this is the original factory 2032 battery that it came with, which it does only take one 2032 battery. So from my experience, the battery life seems fine so far. And like I said, even if it dies, I still have an etched reticle, so oh well, right? And don't forget, a lot of what we're talking about here is an SHTF optic setup. And the reason we're talking about that is because I want this thing to work no matter the conditions. And so batteries aren't necessary, which I think is very cool. But why is that so important when it comes to the red dot? Well, let's talk about that because that's the next part of this equation, which is the Holosun SCS MOS. Now, just so we're all on the same page and I have everything covered here. 
This Optic 3X Micro Prism from Primary Arms is about $320. The 1.93 inch riser, if that's something you would want, is separate and would be an extra $20, okay? Now, in order to run this Hollow Sun in the offset mount, you would have to get a mount that's separate as well. And that mount, I believe, is $30. So, and I might be mixing some of this up, but the total cost of the package is $720. Either way, this mount is cool because it is a direct MOS mount, which means you could take any Glock MOS plate and then put any other red dot sight on there that you want. Or in the case of the Hollow Sun SCS MOS, you can just put that right on the mount because it's made to go right on an MOS cut Glock slide. So that's why I wanted to try it out because I thought, hey, it's kind of a perfect match, right? This is a perfect match. Like this is the right red dot sight for this setup. And I'm gonna tell you why here right now, okay? First off, it's $350. The Hollow Sun SCS MOS is 350 bucks. It's not very cheap, but it's also still not as expensive as an, as an RMR. And it brings a lot of features to the table that an RMR doesn't have, okay? First off, it has the mounting platform right there like we talked about in the sense of Glock MOS, which is cool. And if you do wanna get one of those, just make sure you get the MOS for this particular set up because they do make an MMP one now for the Smith & Wesson, uh, for the Smith & Wesson MMP pistol series. And unfortunately that probably wouldn't work on here. So make sure you're looking for the MOS particular model. And this thing for $350 brings a lot to the table. You have a two MOA dot or a 32 MOA circle dot. This one is a green model. I believe they have a red model out now as well. And it has no batteries at all. Now, what does that mean? Well, like I said, this whole setup isn't dependent on batteries at all. You don't need the illumination in the prism optic. It still has an etched reticle, but you do need the illumination for a red dot sight because without it, you don't have a red dot sight. Well, what's nice about this setup is that this particular hollow sun does not require batteries at all. So how does that work? Well, it's solar charges with ambient light, any ambient light, outside, inside, it doesn't really matter. And here's the thing. It works very well. I've had it for the same amount of time that I've had the micro prism and it's still going strong. I haven't had a single issue with it not working or with the illumination not being there. So I'm not really sure what kind of space magic they put into this particular optic, but so far so good, I have no complaints. And what I've seen from other reviewers like Sage Dynamics, for example, Aaron Cohen does a lot of really good testing when it comes to optics. Um, he said it's good to go and he hasn't had a single issue with it either. So I feel pretty good about this optic in the sense of it not needing a battery ever. And the fact that if you're talking about an SHTF rifle setup, why would you wanna to have to worry about batteries, right? So it is good to go in that regard. It only weighs one ounce and it's a titanium body. So it's very strong, very durable and extremely lightweight. I'm not really too upset about this optic. Now, the only thing that isn't good about it is that it doesn't have any kind of manual adjustments. All you can change is the reticle in the sense of it being a singular dot or a circle dot. And I'm running it with the singular dot because a two MOA dot in an offset position is pretty nice for just being able to hit targets further out if you need to or whatever you're doing. But regardless, this particular optic isn't really optimized for night vision, right? So I think it actually sits at home really well in the offset position, or when I say that, I mean like the 45 degree angle offset. And the reason for that is because we're not trying to achieve night vision compatibility here. So in this offset position, you have a very easy transition from your cheek weld right into the offset. And at the same time, you're not trying to achieve night vision status. So you don't have as many height over bore issues either. And because it's a little too bright under night vision, which I did test out and I unfortunately don't have any footage of that for you quite yet. I'm still working on getting that whole setup figured out. But what I will say is that I tried it out and look in a pinch, I'm sure it would work. Like it's very bright but it's not so bright that you're gonna like burn your eyes out under night vision. It's just not optimal for that use. So I just wanna really try to push it towards that type of use case scenario, right? But what I will say is that other than that, it's good to go. And the photos I'm showing you of it being in different lighting conditions and like looking from inside to outside and being in a dark room versus using a weapon mounted light and all these different photos that I'm flashing in right now of that particular optic being used, don't give it justice in the sense of how the camera picks up the reticle versus how your eye does, because I can see it in every lighting condition perfectly fine. Like I, I am very impressed with its ability to auto adjust because like I said, you can't manually adjust it. That's why there's no night vision settings and why the battery life is so good because it auto adjusts based on lighting environment as well as probably some of its energy consumption needs in my opinion. I don't know that for a fact, but that's just my assumption. Either way, no issues at all with being able to see it in any lighting environment. And, and I'm not just trying to say that because like 
you know, I'm you know, working with hollow sun or anything like that because I'm not. I don't work with hollow sun. I don't work with primary arms. You know, all these things are available to me through Midway USA, which is nice because I don't have to have any particular type of review based on these items. But I actually owned these things before I ever even started my Midway USA partnership. So that should tell you something as well. I spent my own money on these optics and I actually really like this setup. So I'm trying to share this with everybody because SHTF rifles are something we talk about a lot, but having quality optics does matter. And you want your stuff to be able to reach out and take care of business if need be. And what does this do for you? You get 3X magnification with ranging. So you get data and you get positive identification with a very accurate and easy to use optic. And then you also get the etched reticle, so no batteries required. You get the offset RDS, which gives you better maybe CQB possibilities or whatever it might be, while having a backup sight redundancy in order to make sure that if something happens over here, you still have something to use over here. And as you can see on this particular build, which this is my bag gun setup, which you guys have seen in a previous video, on this particular build, I don't run backup iron sights. Why is that? Well, first off, I have to run this optic all the way to the rear of the receiver in order to have decent eye relief. That's just something I had to do with this. It's something you would probably have to do if you're gonna run this optic. Now, I don't feel the need to have backup iron sights necessarily because I have two different optics, neither one of them needs batteries, and even if all electronics die, EMP goes off and these things just stop working, well, this one has an etched reticle and will still give me something to work with. So I don't feel like I'm going to somehow lose both optics simultaneously to the point where I need backup iron sights. And this is, like I said, more of a bag gun setup anyway. So this isn't like my run out the door forever rifle per se, but uh, I don't feel like I'm lacking anything either in that department. So that's just another thing to consider. No batteries needed, redundancy and quality. I mean, I'm really not upset with either of these optics for the price, okay? Now, what are some negatives? Because there are some negatives that I wanna go over here as well. First off, it's kind of hard to get used to. I didn't like this optic, the 3X Micro Prism, at first. No issues with the Hollow Sun. It's just a mini reflex sight, used to those. No big deal there. But the Micro Prism was kind of hard to get used to. Getting into the eye box and trying to acquire a full field of view while getting a good sight picture and everything else, it took a little bit. And at first, I didn't like it. In fact, I was just like, eh, I don't know about this. I might get rid of it, right? And I actually was talking to some other content creators saying, hey, I'm not sure about this optic. What are your thoughts, right? Because I just really wasn't sold on it right at the beginning. But the more time I spent with it and the longer I used it, the more I appreciated what it brought to the table. And now I like it quite a bit. Okay, so hard to get used to, and let's be honest, it's kind of, this is just my opinion, this is very subjective, but it's kind of ugly, Only 20 I don't know, rounds, don't worry I, that's just too. what I think, I think you probably think so too. Oh well, it's function over form in the sense of what matters is practicality when we're talking about this stuff, not, you know, is it cool looking, right? So it, it looks fine, but like just personally in my opinion, I don't know, it feels off balance in the sense of aesthetics. Anyway, moving on past something that's much more important, I guess. Um, you don't get your backup iron sights because of where you have to position it on the receiver. So if you're gonna run backup iron sights, they have to go forward of the optic, which isn't a big deal. You can easily do that, and if that's something you wanna do, just be aware that that's something you'll probably have to do, okay? Unless you have some weird eyes that work with eye relief different than everyone else's. But in general, you're gonna to have to mount your backup iron sights in front of the optic, which isn't a big deal, okay? Now, Another thing that's a, a negative, but I don't know if this is like a negative as much of it's, as it's just like an unknown. I just don't know how long it's gonna hold up for or what kind of durability it has in the sense of long-term durability for SHTF scenarios. I mean, there's nothing about it that, that screams, you know, fragile. Uh, I think I got the mount system figured out for the most durable option in the sense of avoiding the cantilever mounts that it comes with. But Regardless, we just don't know for a fact if it's going to have the same quality or durability as something like an ACOG, right? So you do have to consider that. However, with modern machining and modern optics, it's really hard to put something out that's just going to fall apart, right? Especially from a reputable company, which I would say Primary Arms is a reputable company at this point in time. They have some very good products. So at the end of the day, I trust it no problem, but we just don't know. So I have to at least mention that, okay? And then the last thing is that, like I said to begin with in many different instances at this point, but this setup's just not really night vision friendly. So if you're worried about night vision specifically, this particular setup isn't really geared towards that. Now, what I will say is that 
Primary Arms is actually coming out with the 5X magnification version of this optic in the near future. And I'm looking forward to that because not only will you get a little more magnification, which is cool for taking things out a little bit further, but they're also going to be putting out a piggyback style mount for your red dot sight that will go on top of the optic instead of off to the side at a 45 degree angle. So getting that piggyback means that you'll actually have that night vision capability that we're missing out on right now. So that could be a little bit of a game changer too here in the future, which is something I'll be watching out for because I'm excited about it. This is a great optic. Like I said, the whole package, $720, 10.8 ounces, and it doesn't need batteries and you get mounts and everything else with it that you need. I mean, it's really hard to beat for what this accomplishes, okay? Now, is this an LPVO in the sense of versatility? Maybe not as much, but I don't know how versatile are you trying to be? Because this 3X lets me get out pretty far and lets me identify from pretty far away. I don't feel like I'm lacking a whole lot. Not to mention the weight penalty of an LPVO at least coming in what? I'd say the lightest possible option is probably like 17 to 20 ounces depending on mount. But generally they're coming in around 23 to 28 ounces. And this is 10.8 in total. And that's LPVO, like that weight range I just gave you is not including a offset red dot or anything else. So. These are just things you have to consider. All in all, very, very happy with this optic setup. I wanted to share it with everybody because I honestly think that it's a good option, especially if you're on a budget and you have some money to spend because $720 isn't cheap by any means. And this is not a cheap optic. This is an affordable budget friendly optic. And I think for that money, it's very hard to beat this configuration versus, you know, 15 to $1,700 on something like this, which is great but it's very expensive. And don't forget, almost double the weight. So this is something you should consider. Just my opinion. If you have any questions about it, leave it in the comments below. I mean, honestly, I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have, but at the end of the day, this is something that you don't really appreciate until you have it in your hands and you're able to use it. So this is something you might wanna just try out. Now, full disclosure, I'm gonna give you a full disclosure right this second about my plans, okay? Because I don't want anyone to get all hyphy on me, which I guess if you're not from the Bay Area, you might not know what that means. But either way, this optic is coming off of this gun. Not because I don't like the optic and not because there's anything wrong with it. But I am actually gearing this gun a little bit more towards night vision here in the future. So I will be throwing a Unity Tactical mount on here with a Comp M5 and probably throw a magnifier on there at some point as well. But that doesn't mean I'm moving away from this optic setup. In fact, like I said, I'm highly looking forward to the 5X version of it here in the near future. And the other thing that you know, I have to keep in mind is that the 762 by 39 reticle was really only purchased with the idea of it being able to be reasonable for my 11.3 inch 5.56 here. And without that particular platform in the mix anymore, eh, it might not have the same use for this particular model of the 3X micro prism. However, you better believe I'm keeping the hollow sun for when that 5X micro prism comes out, which hopefully is soon. So anything else you got for me, you know what to do. You want to support the channel. There's always a subscribe star page, which I will be doing some cool stuff over there. There is some exclusive content there. We talk about things that we don't talk about here on YouTube. And it's a good way to directly communicate with me if that's something you need to do. Not sure why you'd need to, but hey, it gives you an option. Not to mention there are preparedness incentives for being part of that community. So make sure you check that out. I'll put a link down below in the description as well as in the pinned comment. And anything else you need from me, you can always go to magicprepper.com. And besides that, it's going to be it for Magic Prepper.